Hello everybody, this is a tutorial about phase noise, but also frequency stability and uh, related problems. We are going to cover in a different part a general view of phase noise, related quantities and so on. The phase noise in electronic devices, amplifiers, dividers and so Phase noise in oscillators, also known as the Lisson effect, instrument and measurement metals, and some pathologies we find in practical measurements. We conclude with available resources for learning more. Let's go! We review some basic concepts about the phase noise and two sample variances. This is the family of Allen variances. Let's start with the clock signal. This is going to take us busy for the full tutorial. So the clock signal looks like uh, voltage, function of time. Uh, that is a peak amplitude uh, multiplied by this 1 plus alpha. Uh, alpha is the fractional amplitude of fluctuation. And then uh, there is a cosinus uh, carrier frequency, 2 pi nu 0 omega t, and uh, the random phase. Well, we use uh, the symbol nu for uh, uh, the regular frequency, the symbol f uh, for uh, Fourier frequency, and uh, the symbol omega for uh, both. Well, the clock signal looks uh, looks like uh, this. We observe uh, it with an ideal noise-free oscilloscope with a perfectly stable and accurate time base. So when we have the trigger in this point and we observe the second time base in this point, we can observe in the presence of pure AM noise something like this, fluctuating peaks here, fluctuating peaks uh, here and here and here, and uh, the zero crossings are perfectly stable. This is uh, uh, what happens uh, in the presence of AM noise only, and the fluctuation is uh, V0 times alpha, which means uh, that uh, the fractional amplitude fluctuation is just alpha. Now, if we have a pure PM noise, we observe that the amplitude is always stable here, as emphasized by this, this pink arrows, and we observe only time fluctuations here. The same thing can be represented as a vector. A pure cosine is a vector of length v0. And this vector fluctuates like this in the presence of a pure AM noise. And it fluctuates like this in the presence of pure uh, phase noise. Of course, reality is the combination of both. <laughs> so, this is uh, the polar representation of uh, the clock signal, uh, so the clock signal in a polar coordinate. Uh, it can be also represented uh, in a Cartesian coordinate with uh, this V0 cosinus omega t, that is the main signal here, and uh, a parallel signal uh, 
parallel signal here that is the amplitude noise and a perpendicular signal that is uh, uh, the phase noise. And in the low noise approximation, uh, we have uh, fractional amplitude is equal to NC divided by V0 and uh, the phase is NS divided by V0. All right. Now we introduce uh, the physical concept of the spectrum. Look uh, at the prism uh, splitting uh, the white light uh, in uh, the colors of rainbow. And uh, we have uh, this uh, sensor array or uh, a photofilm uh, depending on your preference. So. Uh, we see how the power is distributed between uh, the different uh, wavelength uh, from the longest wavelength red to the shortest wavelength uh, blue and violet or from uh, the lowest frequency to the highest frequency. So the power spectral density tells us uh, the amount of energy go, going uh, in a given bandwidth divided by the bandwidth. So we take uh, the power here, uh, kind of uh, band pass filtered uh, in the uh, bandwidth B, and we divide it by the bandwidth B. Uh, the power spectral density can have the dimension of watts per Earth, uh, or uh, in the case of most electrical instruments, uh, volts squared per Earth uh, with an FFT spectrum analyzer, or uh, in uh, our case, in our specific case, radians squared per Earth, uh, if we measure a phase fluctuation. So. Uh, the spectrum, the power spectral density of the phase phi should be the preferred quantity. But uh, engineers uh, traditionally use this quantity that is pronounced script L, functional frequency. And uh, this quantity is defined as one half uh, times uh, the power spectral density of the phase. And of course, uh, uh, the Fourier frequency uh, must be less uh, than the carrier frequency, otherwise uh, you cannot have a proper upper and a lower sideband to have modulation. This factor one half means take away 3 dB and uh, script L is always uh, shown as 10 times logarithm base 10 of L and it is given in dBc per Earth. Many people still have in mind the obsolete definition of L, which is the single side power in one Earth bandwidth divided by the carrier power. Well, first, the IEEE standard uh, 1139 defines uh, L in this way and not in this way. And uh, the new definition has been in force uh, for decades. This obsolete uh, definition is conceptually incorrect because uh, it doesn't refer to a real phase, it refers only to power, so it doesn't divide AM from PM. It is experimentally incorrect because all instruments are based on a measurement of phase and not on the measurement of a sideband power. And then uh, this definition is unsuitable to large angles because, uh, uh, well, uh, this uh, this ratio no longer converges uh, to to an angle. Uh, this uh, this is no longer defined 
in uh, the presence of uh, large swings. Now, we have other useful quantities. This is the random phase phi. We can convert uh, the random phase phi into a time fluctuation that is called x, which is uh, phi divided by 2 pi nu zero, and the unit is seconds. Otherwise, uh, uh, we can uh, use uh, the frequency fluctuation delta nu function of t. I put delta nu in parentheses uh, to emphasize the fact that uh, delta nu is an un unbreakable quantity or function of time. And uh, this is expressed in, in hertz. Of course, uh, uh, the derivative uh, of uh, the phase versus time is the angular frequency. So divided by 1 uh, over 2 pi, this is uh, the frequency fluctuation. And then we use the fractional frequency fluctuation that uh, is the frequency fluctuation divided by the carrier frequency, and this is denoted with the letter Y. Of course, you can cross all of these relationships. Now, when it comes to spectra, uh, we have the same quantities. Uh, the power spectral density of uh, phi, uh, power spectral density of x, y, and delta nu. And the units uh, are radian square per earth instead of radian, second square per earth instead of seconds, and so on and so on. So. Well, keep in mind uh, this uh, spectrum of y because this is the gate uh, to the two sample variances, Allen and so and so. Mm -hmm. Let me stress the importance uh, of the phase time fluctuation x and likewise uh, the fractional frequency uh, y. So if you allow uh, phi to exceed uh, plus minus uh, pi and count the number of turns, uh, we have converted the phase into, into time. And uh, this is what happens uh, in, uh, in a gear work. So uh, this quantity x is independent of the carrier frequency nu, so it uh, uh, enables a fair comparison uh, between uh, oscillators, components, uh, and, uh, and uh, so on. And uh, this is a constant uh, in noise-free uh, synthesizers. And likewise, uh, y, the fractional uh, frequency for the equation, y is uh, a constant in uh, a noise-free synthesizer. A model that has been found useful to describe clocks, components, and so and so is the polynomial law or power law. This is a Laurent polynomial that is a generalized polynomial which includes the negative exponents of the variable. So uh, we start from phase noise, um, which is denoted uh, with B0. And this is, of course, flat. Then uh, we have a flicker of phase uh, that has a slope uh, 1 over f. This is the term uh, B minus 1 over f. Then we have uh, random walk of phase, uh, which is uh, white uh, frequency noise, uh, b minus 2 divided by f squared. Frequency flicker, uh, which is uh, b minus 3 divided by f cube. Frequency random walk, b minus 4 divided by f4. 
and uh, so on if we need the additional terms. It is important to understand that two port devices can have only these terms, B minus one, so Flicker and White. Otherwise, the delay between input and output diverges in the long run. However, however, locally here, a two-port component can have some bump that is mistaken for uh, easily mistaken for a higher slope phenomena, but uh, this bump has to stop somewhere. Oppositely, oscillators uh, they can have a wide frequency noise. They always have a wide frequency noise, frequency flicker. Uh, and uh, often also random walk of frequency and uh, so on and so on. The polynomial law can be applied to all the quantities we have seen. So it applies, of course, to the phase. Uh, it applies uh, to the time fluctuation like this, and the slopes are the same. We use uh, the coefficient b for phase noise, the coefficient k for time fluctuation, and then the, the, the frequency fluctuation is the derivative of the phase, so a derivative in the spectrum uh, introduces a factor f squared uh, and in the end uh, we have uh, the white phase noise with the slope uh, f squared uh, flicker phase with the slope uh, f power one no white frequency noise obviously is a constant, flicker frequency has a slope of minus one, random walk of frequency has a slope of minus two, and so And the same happens here for the fractional frequency. So we use the coefficient, we use the letter D for the coefficient of delta nu, and the coefficient H for for uh, uh, the polyamia law of uh, Y. The Allen variance is a totally different way uh, to uh, represent, uh, represent uh, the fluctuation of an oscillator. So we take uh, this quantity, the average uh, fractional frequency like uh, this, uh, um, uh, and uh, this is defined uh, as uh, well, uh, as the regular average on a time tau, and uh, then uh, the Allen variance is defined as uh, uh, the average fractional frequency taken uh, in a time slot two minus uh, the same uh, fractional frequency average in the Contiguous time slot uh, one, both are averaged on the same duration tau, and then we add this one half uh, and uh, and a squared and a mathematical expectation. This is exactly the same thing as uh, the experimental variance uh, with the two samples. The the expectation in practice is replaced with the average with the average on a finite number m of samples. So you write this here. Here you have m samples and and so and so and so. 
So the Alan Vines uh, looks like this. Uh, first thing we observe uh, is that uh, the time scale uh, is the mirror image of the frequency scale. So here in the left hand side, uh, we have the fast phenomena like uh, a flicker and white uh, phase noise, uh, the phenomena we had in the right hand side uh, in, uh, in uh, the spectrum. And uh, here uh, in the right hand side uh, at longer tau, we have the slow phenomena like uh, random walk of frequency and uh, frequency drift, uh, which is usually not a scene uh, in the world of spectra. Well, uh, then uh, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, a trick uh, to understand uh, all of these variances at once. You see here, uh, the regular Allen bias uh, has uh, this uh, this pattern for the polynomial law. Uh, the regular Allen bias does not divide between flicker and white phase noise, but uh, the modified variance does. The parabolic variance does. Actually, this formula describes all the variances. Uh, just replacing uh, the type of a frequency counter used uh, to average the frequency. Details uh, are uh, here in uh, these articles. Finally, we address the question of how to convert S phi into sigma y. So, uh, usually we start from uh, script L, which is found in the specs uh, of a component. We convert it uh, into the spectrum of phase noise, and then we convert S V into S Y. Then we have all these uh, coefficients. Uh, of the polynomial law of SY, and uh, uh, we use uh, this column uh, to convert uh, SY into Allen variance. We use this column uh, to convert uh, SY into modified Allen variance, and uh, so. So for each term, uh, we have a different formula. For example, for white frequency noise, uh, the Allen variance is one half h z over tau, and so on and so on. And well, and that is all uh, for uh, this first part. The second part is about phase noise in electronic devices. First. Uh, we observe in electronic devices two different types of noise that, is, that are called additive noise and parametric noise. Well, additive noise is shown in this, uh, this figure. So the device uh, looks like a noise free amplifier or noise free whatever else. Uh, receiving an input uh, at the, the carrier frequency and delivering uh, the output uh, at the carrier frequency to the same carrier frequency too. And then we add the noise in the band close to the carrier. So the internal noise of this device uh, may look like uh, this. Uh, with uh, some one or F noise uh, uh, around a DC, white noise uh, or more or less white noise in the white region around the carrier, and, and so and so. Then uh, 
uh, real devices, uh, they have um, a pass bound uh, or, uh, or a low pass filter somewhere. So only a fraction of the spectrum is visible around the carrier and beyond some frequency, the, uh, the signal is no longer available. So uh, when we add uh, some noise around, around uh, here, uh, around here, uh, we have the noise amplified uh, uh, at the output uh, with the same coefficient uh, as, uh, as uh, the power is amplified. Of course, so we talk about uh, the noise uh, created inside uh, inside uh, the device. So, uh, when uh, this is detected, uh, this looks like a phase noise or amplitude noise, but uh, the nature of this uh, is uh, something like the uh, sound of uh, a receiver tuned uh, where there is nothing, uh, where there is no emission. The parametric noise is something totally different. Uh, so we have real uh, modulation, uh, phase modulation or amplitude modulation inside of the device. Uh, and uh, this modulation is powered by, uh, an app by some uh, some noise process inside. So what we have is an upper up conversion of the near DC DC processor. So the sidebands, the noise sidebands are proportional to the carrier. And in this model, it is clear that the modulation depth in the language of radio engineering uh, is independent of the carrier power, at least uh, within a linear region. The same happens with noise, with phase noise. Here, the noise sidebands are independent of the carrier power, so the phase noise changes with power. Let's look at uh, the additive uh, uh, PM and AM noise. Uh, so we have a carrier of power P0 here, and we have some white noise uh, in the surroundings. Uh, we cannot have uh, one over F noise in this way because this is added and uh, the additive process uh, doesn't know where is the carrier frequency we have in mind. So we take a, we take a region of bandwidth B here and a region of bandwidth B here. And of course, uh, this, uh, this uh, noise is uncorrelated from uh, the lower sideband because this is just random stuff other the so half uh, the noise power goes into phase noise and half of the noise power goes into amplitude noise so uh, we can uh, think of this uh, as uh, a vector so first the carrier is a represented the vector. Second, uh, you have upper side band uh, that is a small vector rotating counterclockwise uh, because uh, the frequency f uh, is, uh, is higher than the carrier. The lower side band is the same rotating clock clockwise uh, because uh, f uh, because uh, the sideband is lower than, than the carrier. And then uh, when we combine these vectors uh, with the carrier, we have something uh, swinging here. 
And uh, when uh, we calculate uh, the ratio between this and this, uh, we have to introduce a fourth uh, square root of 2 because this is a swinging uh, sinusoidally. And uh, what do we get in the end is, uh, is a phase noise that is equal to this noise floor divided by P0. Of course, we have cancelled the, the bandwidth taking one hertz. And in the same way, we get the spectrum of fractional amplitude, which is equal to this noise level divided by, by P0. So when we combine white and parametric noise, something weird happens. This is shown for flicker noise. So we know that the white noise is proportional to the reciprocal of power. We have seen the derivation of this. And then the flicker noise is a modulation process, so it is independent of carrier power. So the pattern looks like this. Look like this. With the cutoff frequency, that is not the same at low power and at high power. Sadly, uh, this corner frequency uh, is uh, sometimes used in data sheets, uh, and uh, this uh, corner frequency is also used uh, in uh, SPICE, uh, SPICE uh, simulation program uh, to simulate uh, electrical circuits. I say sadly because uh, because uh, this uh, corner frequency depends uh, on the operating point, uh, depends on uh, the carrier power, and so on and so on. So it has uh, to be pre-calculated uh, before running uh, the noise uh, simulation. Well, anyway, this is uh, what the theory suggests uh, with the flicker and white noise depending on power. And uh, this is a, a plot uh, that, uh, that is given by a friend, uh, by my, my friend Vincent Giordano, uh, here at Femto ST Institute. And uh, as you see, at a different uh, power level uh, from 0 dBm, which is 1 milliwatt, uh, to minus 30 dBm, which is 1 microwatt. Uh, so in uh, three decades wide, uh, uh, we see that uh, the white noise uh, follows uh, well uh, the uh, 1 over p low, and uh, the flicker noise uh, is rather constant, uh, independent of power. So this idea that uh, uh, that uh, uh, flicker noise uh, is independent of power has uh, funny consequences. Uh, of course, uh, we have observed this, uh, the same thing uh, in a number of amplifiers. Uh, uh, this uh, was measured by uh, Rodolphe Boulot Boudot at uh, Las Toulouse. Uh, this is uh, different amplifiers. Uh, they follow uh, decently well uh, uh, the model I have shown, and uh, this is uh, the reference publication uh, uh, showing uh, what happens uh, in uh, amplifiers and uh, similar uh, components. When uh, we cascade the amplifiers, uh, something weird happens. So the idea that the flicker noise is independent of carrier power uh, has an important implication. You have two amplifiers, you uh, swap them, uh, and uh, uh, 
and you get uh, the same uh, phase noise. You cascade the two amplifiers uh, to equal amplifiers and you get uh, twice uh, the phase noise, uh, you cascade the three amplifiers, uh, uh, you get uh, three times uh, the, the noise of one amplifier and, uh, and the, the signal level uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't affect this or affect this very little. Uh, uh, oppositely, uh, the white noise follows uh, follows uh, the, the well-known freeze formula, uh, which uh, in practice uh, says that the noise of the first stage uh, uh, is uh, the noise uh, of uh, of the chain of cascading amplifiers. Uh, what we see here, uh, when we have one amplifier, we have a very low white noise. When we have two amplifiers, uh, we have a higher and uh, higher white noise because we have to attenuate uh, the input uh, and uh, with the three amplifiers we have even higher uh, uh, white noise because we have to further attenuate uh, the, uh, the input signal. Well, uh, now we introduce another concept, the concept of phase-like noise or phase-time noise, they are synonymous, and the concept of time-like or time-type noise. Again, the two expressions are, are synonymous. So, a phase-like uh, noise uh, is a noise type uh, where the phase fluctuation phi is independent of the carrier fluctuation. And of course, uh, uh, the, the time fluctuation uh, x uh, scales as uh, 1 over nu zero because uh, uh, you remember well this formula x, uh, the time fluctuation uh, is uh, uh, is phi divided by 2 pi and then 2 pi nu zero. So take a look at an at a trigger or at a buffer. You have a sinusoid at the input. You have fluctuating threshold here. So basically, the time fluctuation, uh, the time fluctuation is uh, uh, the voltage fluctuation divided by the rate, uh, which is proportional to frequency. But uh, uh, but uh, the, this proportionality cancels uh, because uh, at higher slew rate uh, you get uh, smaller. Uh, uh, time fluctuation, and in the end you have a phase fluctuation that is equal to the voltage fluctuation uh, divided by V0, regardless of the carrier frequency. And uh, then uh, uh, you put uh, this, uh, the phase fluctuation here, and you get uh, the time fluctuation. Uh, of course, if this is a digital comparator or a digital circuit, you may have to introduce aliasing, but this we keep for later. So the time type or the time-like noise is defined as the time fluctuation x that is independent of the carrier frequency frequency nu zero, so the phase uh, fluctuation uh, phi scales uh, as uh, nu zero. Well, 
the simplest example uh, to see this phenomenon uh, is a delay line or a longer cable uh, that is perturbed by acoustic noise, by temperature fluctuations, uh, or by whatever else. Mm, so this is a wideband device, uh, wideband object, uh, ideally with no dispersion. Uh, so. Uh, the perturbation acts uh, on the delay and uh, uh, and you have a delay fluctuating regardless uh, of the input frequency which is equal to the output frequency and then uh, uh, the the phase uh, is equal to uh, two uh, two time new zero two pi new zero uh, times uh, Times x, and again uh, we may introduce aliasing as appropriate. This uh, uh, this model uh, describes uh, the frequency synthesis. A noise-free frequency synthesizer can be uh, represented as an input stage kind of gearbox and an output stage. Now, uh, we may consider a real input stage and real output stage and uh, so on. So when, uh, uh, when uh, we have a numerator divided denominator that is uh, less than one, uh, the phase noise is divided, uh, is lowered by this quantity n over d squared. So, according to the description of the pure gearbox, uh, from the input signal here, you get uh, the output signal, uh, which is the input uh, multiplied by n over d squared. But, uh, at some point, uh, uh, at some point, uh, uh, this, uh, this noise uh, is limited by the output stage, uh, by the noise of the output stage, which is uh, thermal noise, uh, noise uh, figure uh, of the output transistors, and so and so and so. So uh, you describe uh, uh, the noise of the output stage as this uh, pink, uh, uh, pink uh, line. And uh, when uh, the divided down noise uh, hits, uh, uh, hits uh, the pink line, uh, the actual output uh, is given by, by the output stage. And uh, this is the reference article for uh, this uh, kind of reasoning. We observe uh, these things, uh, these concepts uh, in uh, in a real com component. So this is a DDS a digital uh, direct digital synthesizer. Uh, this is a modern component, 12-bit uh, uh, digital to analog, uh, 2.5 gigahertz clock, uh, and uh, so and so. So when you start from uh, high frequency output down to low frequency output, you observe this uh, this funny phenomenon. As you see, from uh, from uh, 300 megahertz to 200 megahertz, uh, uh, there is um, factor 1.5, uh, which is uh, which is gives uh, in. Um, uh, which is which gives a reduction uh, in noise and so, uh, and uh, this flicker noise uh, scales uh, exactly as uh, e exactly as uh, a time a constant time fluctuation. So, for example, here from the red plot that is 312 megahertz, uh, this. Uh, Black, uh, black, this black stuff uh, 
is 156 megahertz. You have a factor of two in frequency and we got 6 dB. So this is a pure, um, pure time-like noise. And all these curves correspond to 2.4 femtoseconds fluctuation. At some point, uh, dividing down uh, the phase noise, uh, we get, we hit uh, um, on the noise of the output stage uh, and uh, further reducing the frequency, the, the phase noise no longer uh, decreases. And uh, the same thing uh, we observed uh, we observed at uh, the output in the white noise region. Digital circuits, they suffer from aliasing for the simple fact that phase noise exists only in the transitions and the, the, the flat, this flat region is uh, just uh, free from uh, from phase noise. Uh, phase noise uh, doesn't make sense uh, here. So uh, phase noise is uh, sampled uh, twice per period at the rising and at the falling edge. Uh, so the bandwidth uh, of uh, of the phase noise uh, is uh, equal uh, to half of the sampling uh, frequency. So it is equal to the carrier frequency. Now, if you divide it down this, uh, of course, with the noise-free, noise-free flip-flop, uh, and you even not have uh, the limitation of the output stage, uh, what you say, what you do is just uh, reducing the bandwidth because uh, you reduce the carrier frequency, and uh, so the power spectral density increases proportionally because uh, the integral uh, of, of all this uh, is, the, is the total fluctuation. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is an example taken uh, from a Cyclone 3 FPGA. This uh, Cyclone 3 is configured uh, just uh, to uh, repeat uh, uh, the clock frequency from from uh, an arbitrary pin that is called that is used as the input to an arbitrary pin that is used as the output. So what we see at high frequency uh, is exactly the same thing as we have seen before. So we have uh, time-like uh, flicker noise uh, until uh, a critical frequency uh, where uh, the the output buffer uh, limits uh, the flicker uh, the flicker of the output and then so here we have a 6 db per square root uh, 6 db per factor of 2 uh, in uh, uh, in a fr frequency and then in this region uh, we have uh, 3 dB per factor of 2 in frequency, and this is aliasing. At low frequency, uh, noise increases. Actually, this is a bad fit showing uh, that reality doesn't match exactly the theory. Here we get, uh, uh, we, we get uh, 4.5. Actually, five uh, de uh, decibel per factor of two instead of uh, instead of six dB, and uh, here in the white noise uh, we have uh, three point five dB per factor of two instead of uh, in instead of uh, uh, three dB, and that's that. The next topic is phase noise in oscillators, also known as the Lisson effect from this seminal article published in 1966. So we describe the oscillator as an amplifier with the resonator in feedback. 
the resonator is described by its uh, resonant frequency nu zero and by the quality factor q. So uh, the amplifier introduces uh, a phase noise as a psi and we measure s phi as the output. So it turns out that uh, there is a critical frequency here called the uh, lesion frequency equal uh, to nu zero over to q and uh, beyond uh, this critical frequency uh, the output is equal uh, to the phase noise of the input and uh, below uh, this uh, critical frequency the phase noise at the output uh, is the integral of the phase noise at the input and now uh, we take a look at the things. So we describe the real amplifier as uh, just um, just an amplifier with gain compression here and uh, with the amplitude modulation if needed, for sure with the phase modulation and uh, we have this resonator in in the feedback. This model is rather general as it describes different types of oscillators. The Barkhausen condition for stationary oscillation, which is the same thing as phase matching, states that the loop gain A beta must be equal one at the the carrier frequency nu zero. One as a complex number, which means uh, that uh, the absolute value is one and the phase is zero or a multiple of two pi. The Barkhausen condition uh, in practice uh, looks uh, something like uh, something like that. Uh, so, in, in a small signal uh, conditions, uh, we must have a loop gain greater than one. Uh, the exact condition, a loop gain equal one, cannot be achieved in practice because it requires infinite accuracy forever. So we, ne we need uh, a loop gain greater than one to rise uh, the oscillation uh, from noise or from the switch on a transient. Uh, and then uh, at the given uh, power level, uh, the amplifier uh, compresses uh, the signal and uh, this reduces uh, the, uh, the loop gain uh, to one. And then uh, um, we have uh, the phase, uh, so in practice uh, the Backhausen condition uh, is uh, the phase condition or the phase of the resonator sets the resonant frequency and then we need the gain greater than one and uh, saturation fixes uh, uh, this part uh, absolute value equal equal one and now um, we take uh, an heuristic uh, derivation of uh, of the lesion effect so let's uh, uh, let's uh, introduce uh, a phase in the loop. A phase can be either static, static or fast fluctuating. So when we introduce a fast fluctuating phase, not, uh, not static, the resonator acts as a flywheel and the fluctuation phi is not fed back to the input is not so uh, the loop is a kind of open loop and, and so the spectrum of the output is equal to the spectrum of the input 
Then here we have uh, slow fluctuations. And uh, in a quasi-static condition, uh, we have a conversion uh, from the phase we put here to uh, an error delta nu. And uh, this error delta nu is equal to nu zero over 2q. Uh, this comes from the laws uh, describing the resonator multiplied by this static phase, uh, psi. So remember that uh, um, the spectrum is the square of the quantity divided by time. So the spectrum of delta nu is this quantity squared multiplied by the spectrum of psi. And uh, the phase uh, phi is the integral. The phase phi at the output of the oscillator is the integral of delta nu. So the integral uh, takes uh, a prefactor 1 over f squared uh, in, uh, in the spectrum, and we have this. We have this term, 1 over f squared, nu 0 over 2q squared, s of c. When uh, we join uh, this result, we have, uh, so s of c, s of c, s, uh, sorry, s uh, phi is related to S psi by this quantity in square brackets. Here, this is the term 1, which means uh, uh, the phase noise is just a transfer from input to output here. And then uh, we have here, we have the integral factor 1 over F squared with this coefficient. Well, we have derived this equation with the heuristic uh, reasoning, uh, but uh, the, this equation turns out to be exact. So plotting uh, this uh, equation uh, gives, uh, gives uh, something like this, a constant part here, um, a 1 over s squared, part here, which is a pure integral, loss-free integral, and uh, the cutoff frequency that is called the, the Lisson frequency. So we are ready uh, to see this in practice uh, with the above example. By the way, um, uh, just interpreting uh, this spectrum is a fun exercise. Uh, so uh, I interpret uh, this uh, spectrum uh, starting uh, from the right hand part of the spectrum and going uh, towards uh, the left hand side. So here uh, I, I observe that uh, uh, the, the phase noise uh, is uh, 10 minus 17. Uh, this is minus 173 dB convert uh, from uh, script L uh, to S phi um, and on and on and on. And we remember that uh, the white noise uh, is uh, FKT thermal noise and noise figure divided by the power P zero. Well, let's guess uh, that the good amplifier has a noise um, a figure of 1 dB. So using this equation, uh, I estimate um, a power at the input of the sustaining amplifier of the order of uh, half a milliwatt, uh, which is quite plausible for this uh, kind of uh, oscillators. Then, uh, then I I observe I just uh, see this uh, this white noise on the plot. Uh, this is 1.41 10 minus 4, and uh, this crosses uh, the white noise at uh, 3.75 megahertz. And so uh, I take uh, this is clearly the Lisson frequency where uh, where the 1 over f squared uh, joins uh, the, the white noise. Uh, I use this equation, fl 
equal new zero over two Q, and I calculate, I estimate uh, uh, Q equal uh, 1330. Again, uh, quite plausible value for a DRO. Then uh, I observe uh, here, uh, uh, observe here uh, flicker of frequency and the term B3 is 14.1. So um, the flicker of frequency uh, crosses the white frequency at this corner frequency that is 100 kilohertz. So this corner, uh, this corner is basically the corner uh, of uh, of the amplifier. So I have the noise of the amplifier here and uh, I, I guess uh, that uh, the flicker noise uh, of the sustaining amplifier goes here. So I use, uh, I use this equation uh, uh, and I find uh, the term uh, B minus 1 equal 10 minus 12 for the sustaining amplifier. So it is an amplifier uh, with uh, minus 120 dB uh, dB phase noise uh, extrapolated to one Earth, and I'm quite quite comfortable with these values. Of course, uh, uh, we cannot uh, see uh, the the flicker of the buffer because the flicker of the buffer is one over f, uh, and it is for sure lower than uh, the one over f squared uh, due to the Lisson effect. Now we have a different oscillator uh, we can interpret, uh, and uh, this is the an outstanding. Uh, ultra-stable uh, oscillator uh, mm, intended for ultimate applications, uh, 5 MHz. I do the same thing, uh, but uh, there is something different here. Here, the white phase noise uh, is 10 minus 16, and the same way as before, I find uh, P0 equal 33 uh, microwatt uh, as at the input. Nothing seems wrong with this. This is a quite plausible value uh, for uh, the driving uh, power of, uh, of the quartz. Then I see here some uh, uh, some one of ref noise. So at this point I remember that uh, an amplifier is needed that the output and buffer is needed that the output uh, to separate uh, them and to isolate the output from uh, the, the the oscillation loop. So uh, if I assume that there are three stages, buffer and uh, and only one stage, uh, sustaining amplifier, I just uh, the guess that the noise of the sustaining amplifier is one quarter of that. One quarter of that. So it is clear that the Lisson effect can be seen here and it is hidden by a different phenomenon. And this different phenomenon the flicker fluctuation of the resonator. So uh, at this point, uh, I cannot uh, say much more, but what I know is the Q of, um, of a premium uh, uh, quartz resonator at 5 megahertz uh, is, uh, is 2 millions, uh, if, if not more. So the Lisson frequency is around here. I start from uh, the sustaining amplifier that is here, and uh, I, I, I get uh, I, I get uh, this um, this plot for uh, the Lisson effect. As I said, uh, for sure it is hidden, and uh, this is a quite common uh, fact in uh, premium uh, ultra stable uh, oscillators. Then uh, there is uh, one more uh, exercise we can do. Uh, 
uh, is uh, just to convert uh, this uh, B minus 3 um, over F cube into the Allen variance. It's just a matter of using uh, the table I've shown. The last uh, picture of this uh, part uh, is a trouble. Some, uh, some uh, uh, oscillators uh, exhibit uh, extremely low noise, or so, uh, low noise uh, at high frequency, extremely low white noise. Uh, and uh, this is typical of 100 megahertz oscillators. Uh, and uh, this outstandingly low noise is achieved by putting uh, a quartz filter between the buffer and the output. So, with no further buffer here. So what happens uh, is that for uh, frequency that is smaller than uh, the cutoff frequency of, uh, of this quartz. Uh, for, so inside of the bandwidth uh, of, of this quartz, uh, the, the carrier is coupled uh, from buffer to output, uh, and also the noise of all these things goes to the output, uh, and nothing wrong, nothing goes wrong. But uh, for the Fourier frequency higher than this cutoff frequency, so um, outside the, the bandwidth of this filter, uh, this filter is basically open circuit. This means that the noise of the buffer cannot reach the output, uh, and even the thermal noise of uh, the motional resistance of this uh, resonator cannot reach the output. There is no violation uh, of basic physics, uh, but uh, but uh, impedance matching is something weird. Uh, around the carrier. Reverse engineering uh, these oscillators from noise uh, is uh, something uh, tricky and uh, still unclear to me. Uh, these oscillators uh, claim very, very low noise, uh, but uh, uh, we do not know if uh, actual uh, applications can exploit uh, this low noise or not. and. Uh, um, and we have observed the odd behavior of commercial phase noise analyzers uh, when we uh, measure these oscillators. The fourth part of this lecture is about instruments. All uh, modern instruments uh, look more or less uh, like uh, this. We have uh, two phase detectors, uh, each one uh, with its own uh, frequency reference. So we compare uh, the input uh, to the reference, we compare the input to the second reference. We have uh, two different estimation of, uh, of the phase, uh, and then uh, we perform uh, Fourier anal analysis and average, uh, and with uh, some tricks uh, of uh, statistics, uh, uh, we extract uh, the noise of those later on the test, uh, and uh, we reject uh, the noise of the two references, uh, and also the noise of the two detectors. There is a different flavor of uh, the same application, uh, the instrument is basically the same, but it is used in a different way. So we have a two-port device here. The, the oscillator is a reference, but its noise is rejected because it is common to the input of the device and the test and to the detector. So here we have the phase uh, across uh, the device under test uh, means uh, um, means input uh, 
minus reference again a, diff a second estimation of the phase of the device under test and again Fourier analysis and the statistics to remove the noise of these detectors all right now we look at the instruments inside the principles and so most uh, instruments uh, used now are based on uh, the double balanced mixer used as uh, a phase to voltage converter so the double balanced mixer uh, looks like this is a ring of diodes it receives um, two strong signals at the same uh, frequency and the signals are in quadrature sinus and cosine uh, and uh, so in this condition uh, strongly saturated at both inputs uh, we observe uh, a signal uh, here a DC signal that is uh, zero when uh, the two uh, the two inputs are perfect in quadrature but uh, uh, the input is a DC voltage uh, proportional uh, to phase and uh, this is the phase to voltage gain of, of the mixer uh, this is an example uh, this is uh, from my laboratory notebook uh, specific mixer and uh, here uh, we have a tutorial on the double balanced mixer uh, some uh, 40 pages or more on general uh, general staff so of course uh, if you have a random phase here you have random voltage here that is proportional uh, to the random phase and that's it the mixer is is very interesting and a useful device because it has low background noise uh, this uh, this is a noise measurement measured by my friend Damien here uh, we have a tutorial on the double balanced mixer some uh, 40 pages or more on general general staff so of course uh, if you have a random phase here you have random voltage here that is proportional uh, to the random phase and that's it the mixer is is very interesting and a useful device because it has low background noise uh, this uh, this is a noise measurement measured by my friend Damien and uh, well this um, this is the noise of this mixer at uh, at uh, some uh, 10 uh, 10 dBm power here and uh, the flicker extrapolated uh, to one earth is uh, minus 135 db radians square per earth so minus 138 dbc per earth and this is one of the best mixers uh, i have uh, i have ever seen then uh, the flicker noise that the, uh, is degraded uh, if you reduce the power of, of the input then uh, reducing the power of the input uh, the voltage the, the phase to voltage again uh, this uh, coefficient uh, k phi is reduced to two uh, so we have a higher uh, uh, higher white noise in, in, uh, in the background uh, well, uh, measuring uh, this mixer, uh, Damien uh, focused uh, primarily on uh, on the flicker. He didn't uh, spend much attention uh, to white noise uh, because white noise uh, is not an issue. It is highly predictable. Uh, 
uh, anyway, uh, um, the the noise here is limited uh, by by a DC amplifier, and uh, better options uh, are are available. And it is actually easy to get. Uh, uh, below minus 160 dB and uh, reasonably easy to get at minus 170. Uh, this without uh, playing statistics uh, to reject uh, the mixer. This is the noise of the mixer alone. Now, uh, when you want to measure an, uh, an oscillator, uh, you use the mixer with the PLL. You need a PLL because, uh, because the mixer requires the quadrature condition. So, in the average, uh, the reference oscillator tracks uh, uh, the oscillator on the test, and uh, you get a fluctuation here. And uh, the fluctuation uh, drives the control. Uh, you have a DC voltage uh, to adjust uh, the working point of the reference, and that uh, that's it. Uh, then PLL used uh, in this way is actually a high pass filter because uh, um, here you have the fl the faster fluctuations that are not. Uh, eliminated by the feedback. So, in practical measurement, uh, you have two options. First option, you assume that uh, the noise of this oscillator uh, is uh, significantly smaller than the other, so you have a good reference oscillator, and, uh, and so um, you, you just uh, use this equation uh, to estimate SV. The other option uh, is uh, to assume that uh, the two oscillators are equal uh, and, uh, and you take away 3 dB from the result. Just half, uh, of, half of the noise comes from each. Now, a naive option uh, is to have a very slow PLL so, uh, so the DC uh, signal you observe has the same spectrum as the oscillator on the test. But uh, this is a poor option uh, because in this region uh, you have uh, a large voltage swing. This means uh, a larger full scale range of uh, the converter, uh, the analog to digital converter after the mixer and uh, higher noise. A better, a better option looks like this. Uh, you use a fast PLL uh, here. Uh, so here uh, you have F, F squared uh, behavior uh, of uh, the PLL as a filter. And this goes uh, with the 1 over F cube, and you get uh, something like 1 over F and maybe 1 over F squared in uh, the random walk of frequency region there. So mm, this is more efficient uh, uh, to the extent of uh, the um, full scale range of the converter, and uh, it has another advantage. Uh, uh, you have a strong feedback uh, that overrides injection locking. Actually, uh, oscillators, uh, they accumulate energy in, in the resonator, so they are highly prone uh, to injection locking. If uh, there are other oscillators at the same frequency, or other signals on the same frequency in the laboratory, if you have a 10 megahertz oscillator in a metrology laboratory, there, there is a 10 megahertz sharp signal everywhere on, uh, on your tabletop. Good. Now, um, now, we know how to use the mixer, and we combine two equal channels uh, um, to reject uh, 
to reject the noise of the instrument and to reject the noise of, uh, of the oscillator. Actually, uh, it is useful to replace uh, the reference oscillators with the synthesizers, uh, like uh, here and uh, here, uh, because a synthesizer is flexible and um, and uh, solves the problem of measuring uh, different oscillators on the test uh, instead of replacing the reference every time. This is just a PLL as before. The other PLL as before, we have analog to digital conversion, analog to digital conversion, FFT and the spectral analysis. Uh, I'll um, describe later what happens here. Uh, for now, keep in mind uh, that uh, when you average uh, on M, uh, M acquisition uh, here, uh, the background noise of this machine, I mean uh, synthesizers and mixer, uh, is rejected by a factor that is proportionally proportional to one over a square root of M. So, uh, it so. It takes a factor of 10 more averages uh, to have a 5 dB rejection. There are um, a few uh, manufacturers of uh, instruments like this uh, with or without uh, internal synthesizers. Digital, fully digital uh, measurement uh, is a different option, uh, is a more modern option. Uh, digital measurement looks like this. Uh, look at first at this uh, thing in uh, the green area. Uh, you have analog uh, uh, to digital conversion, uh, high sampling rate and in FPGA you perform a down conversion by multiplying by sinus and cosine at the same frequency as the input. Filter and decimation and then you have this popular cordic algorithm uh, to extract uh, um, phase uh, and optionally amplitude uh, from uh, uh, from uh, the I and Q data. Well, we cannot uh, put uh, the reference frequency here uh, because uh, the ADC works uh, uh, with only with uh, high sampling frequency, narrow, reasonably narrow range. Uh, well, uh, we cannot put uh, put this, uh, this uh, input uh, on the front panel. So what we do uh, is uh, to have uh, another, another system uh, that is uh, the same uh, thing as before. So here we have the phase versus the clock. Here we have uh, the phase uh, versus the clock. Uh, and uh, the difference uh, here is the phase between the two inputs. Uh, a funny thing about uh, digital measurement uh, is that it works uh, with uh, two different frequencies here, input and reference. Uh, but of course, uh, you have to scale uh, data up or down uh, uh, to bring uh, them uh, at the um, at the same frequency, or to convert everything into phase time, into this quantity x. And the other great thing uh, is that uh, this scheme has no problem with large, large angles, uh, even multiple turns. The background noise uh, is limited by uh, the analog to digital converter as the input. Uh, well, this uh, this converter is the best uh, we have measured uh, in uh, in my laboratory. If I will remember, uh, this uh, was uh, 250 mega sample mega samples per second, and this is the flicker of the converter. 
and uh, converted everything uh, to uh, to phase uh, uh, we uh, we get uh, some uh, minus 108.5 db radian square per uh, per earth uh, because you have uh, to use uh, two converters as uh, shown before uh, the limit is actually minus 105 you add a 3 db for two converters so, and um, the white noise is in the region of minus 155 and uh, and so mm. um, so compared uh, to the double balanced mixer uh, the noise uh, is rather poor and uh, we have to average heavily to reduce this this is a scheme uh, of a full instrument. Uh, so if you want uh, to play uh, the trick uh, of the cross spectrum uh, for uh, for the rejection of uh, the instrument noise, uh, you need four channels. So um, here you have in, input uh, and reference, uh, so the reference is theta, the input is phi, and here you have uh, phi minus theta. And the other, here you get uh, phi and uh, you get uh, psi, and at the output you have uh, phi minus psi. And when you average, uh, uh, the cross spectrum converges uh, to the spectrum of psi, rejecting uh, everything. Uh, everything else. Uh, practical, uh, practical converters are limited uh, to the order of uh, 200 or maybe just above 200 megahertz uh, by, by the speed of converters. Uh, there are faster converters, uh, but uh, they have uh, a smaller equivalent number of bits, uh, so you do not uh, actually probe the system. Uh, and uh, there are a few commercial equipment uh, based uh, on uh, this architecture. Of course, uh, this scheme uh, doesn't describe exactly all them, uh, but uh, but uh, this gives a decent idea of what goes on. The one of the, the latest instruments is the Rodeschwarth FS WP that comes in three version uh, 8 uh, gigahertz uh, 26 gigahertz and uh, 50 gigahertz uh, and uh, this has a different architecture because uh, it uses of course it uses uh, two reference and synthesizers uh, but it uses uh, IQ mixer high level IQ mixer to down converter uh, to down convert uh, the microwave signal uh, to an appropriate IF, and then you have uh, um, analog to digital conversion, uh, um, extraction of phase in FPGA, and then plotting, uh, plotting the noise. Now we take a look at the trick of the dual channel instrument. This is a quite general uh, approach uh, where we have uh, two separate branches of the instrument uh, measuring the same device under test. And of course, uh, we assume uh, that uh, the noise, the internal noise of these two branches, uh, A and B, is statistically independent from one another and also statistically independent uh, from the signal which is the noise of the device under test. Well, uh, the bottom line is that uh, the cross spectrum uh, converges uh, to the spectrum of C and the spectrum of the background noise A and B is rejected uh, proportionally to a factor that is approximately 1 over square root of m, where m is the number of averages. There is a tutorial to read, uh, some 40 pages uh, with all the mathematics. 
But now we take a quick look uh, at uh, how it works uh, and uh, where this uh, rejection comes from. For this, uh, we uh, take uh, the uppercase for the Fourier transform of the lowercase signal. So uh, uppercase A is the Fourier transform of uh, the background noise of the instrument A. Uppercase B, uppercase C are uh, for uh, the instrument background and for the device under test noise. And we take a normalization. Uh, um, the spectrum uh, of uh, the instrument is equal one to one, and of course uh, this method is interesting uh, only when uh, the spectrum of the device under test is smaller than uh, that of the instrument. Otherwise, you have the perfect instrument, and you don't care about all this A property of noise. Uh, is that uh, in the Fourier transform, it is equally split between a real and imaginary part. So if you take uh, the real part, uh, the spectrum is one half, and we, if we take uh, the imaginary part of the spectrum is one half. So let's write uh, the cross spectrum as it is calculated. Uh, two over T is a normalization factor, and uh, two on the numerator comes from the fact uh, that uh, we represent only positive frequencies uh, uh, where uh, the Fourier transform has positive and negative frequencies. So the signal uh, Y <coughs> at the output of an instrument uh, is A plus C. The signal, uh, oh, sorry, the signal Y is B plus C, and the signal X is A plus C. So we expand this. The cross spectrum is 2 over T, A plus C times B plus C complex conjugate. Being A, B, A, C, and C, B statistically independent, the product is rejected by a factor proportional to 1 over m. When we average on m realizations. So when you look at the mathematical expectation of this, uh, you just uh, delete uh, all these terms uh, and you find 2 over t uh, times uh, cc complex conjugate which uh, converges uh, to the spectrum uh, of, uh, of the device under test. Interestingly, C, C complex conjugate is real. But this product is complex. So it, this product has real part and imaginary part. So when you look at the variance of, uh, of this, uh, the variance is equal to 1 over m. We do not calculate it. Uh, it is in this tutorial. So if you use uh, the absolute value of the cross spectrum as the estimator, this estimator takes in the full noise. But you can take the real part of the cross spectrum as the estimator because we have seen that all the signal goes in the real part. So the, because the noise is equally split between the real and imaginary part, and the variance of the real part is equal to 1 over 2m. So the estimator real part takes in 
half the noise of the system. And this is, of, of course, advantageous. Another advantage uh, is that uh, this estimator is biased. Uh, and uh, this is obvious uh, because uh, uh, all these uh, signals, uh, they are random. Uh, so uh, when, uh, when the signal is not uh, strong enough uh, compared uh, to the partially rejected noise, uh, we have uh, we have a, a positive bias. We have a bias. Here, there is no absolute value, so there is no bias. Logarithmic resolution is uh, something really interesting uh, for practical application. Uh, uh, because uh, we plot phase noise in uh, logarithmic scale, so we want uh, uh, we want a number uh, mu of bins per decade or points per decade, if you want. So we have this uh, fractional resolution defined as delta f over f, and uh, uh, we like uh, to have this. Uh, fractional resolution constant all along the logarithmic scale. So one FFT takes, uh, uh, with the resolution delta F, takes, uh, uh, takes a time, an acquisition time, one over delta F. Uh, and we can rewrite this as one over over RF using this. Then we have the total measurement time, which consists of M acquisitions. And of course, M acquisition is, uh, is uh, the total measurement time divided by the time of one acquisition. And you write this uh, uh, as uh, total time multiplied by fractional resolution by frequency. So uh, the average uh, averaging limit uh, is uh, is uh, here uh, the spectrum uh, of one channel divided by the square root of m, and uh, combining these things, uh, we get uh, this interesting factor of f, uh, square root of f uh, in the denominator, and uh, this gives uh, additional 5 dB, uh, dB rejection of noise, uh, 5 dB per decade rejection of noise. In practice, uh, this means uh, that in this region of the spectrum, uh, we have a very fast acquisition, uh, so we can average in a very large number of spectra. Here, uh, we have uh, a slower acquisition uh, and we can average on, on a small number uh, number of the spectra. And uh, this uh, is a practical example. Uh, this is uh, the phase station uh, uh, designed by, by John Miles, uh, one of the commercial instruments uh, I, uh, I have mentioned. And uh, this is the background noise of the instrument after averaging uh, on a longer time. But anyway, oh, you um, anyway, uh, this uh, the averaging is not exactly logarithmic. Uh, is done uh, in a sloth, uh, in a different sloth. Uh, but uh, as you see, uh, the the slope of this background noise limited by by the averaging is exactly as predicted by theory. Now I want to give you a picture of artifacts and other problems in real life. The first thing is that the pollution from the power grid is everywhere. 
it is more visible on components uh, than uh, on oscillators uh, because components uh, have one of ref noise and white noise in this region, Why, uh, while oscillators, uh, they have one over f squared and one over f cube noise, which may hide uh, these, uh, these peaks. The other thing is that uh, uh, odd uh, order harmonics uh, like 50 Earth, 150 to 150 and so on, they are significantly more visible than uh, even order harmonics. And uh, the reason is that uh, transformers uh, have uh, saturation, hysteresis and uh, saturation, and uh, the BH plot uh, generates, uh, has odd uh, symmetry, so it generates uh, odd harmonics. This is a picture of a common artifact uh, seeing, uh, seen in an oscillator. So we start here, this point A. If you magnify this, uh, there is a discontinuity uh, like uh, one or two decibels uh, in this uh, short uh, this uh, point, uh, and uh, this is probably a change in the sampling frequency. So uh, here uh, you see the quantization noise of the analog to digital converter somewhere. In this region B, there is a bump irregular. And, uh, and the plot is noisy. This could be a spectral leakage from uh, harmonics uh, of uh, 50, 50 hertz, um, like uh, these peaks uh, spreading around uh, because of uh, the finite bandwidth associated to the spectral analysis. But this is a guess. Otherwise, uh, it could be a correlated effect uh, or less likely an insufficient averaging. I say less likely because uh, the, the spread of value is uh, rather small compared to the mean value. Here in C, you see a kind of hole in the spectrum and the plot is really very, very regular noisy. This is almost surely an anti-correlated effect, uh, and uh, this signature approximately in this region of frequency is often seen in the K-site uh, 5052B. Here in D, we have a notch. Well, pollution in the form of a notch uh, do not exist. Uh, at least in a simple form, uh, this is almost uh, certainly an, uh, a spore that goes in an anti-correlated way on the two channels uh, of uh, the spectrum analyzer. And uh, this uh, part uh, E is just uh, not the disturbing. Uh, this is the roll-off uh, of the analysis bandwidth. Power splitters uh, are a big problem, uh, and uh, this is uh, still not uh, accounted for in the design of commercial instruments, at least not uh, to the best of my knowledge. Look at a power splitter where you put a carrier and uh, some noise here, and uh, you have uh, the dark port of the power splitter and these phase relationships. These phase relationships are necessary uh, in, um, in the structure of um, a loss-free power splitter, um, even if, if you see uh, only three connectors, uh, uh, this, this resistor is present inside. 
and these phase relationships are a consequence uh, of uh, theorems on the uh, scattering matrix, uh, so you cannot uh, cheat uh, with uh, these things. So the fact is that uh, uh, the useful signal has sign plus and plus, uh, and uh, the noise from uh, this resistor has a sign minus here and a plus here. So uh, the power, the input power, of course, is half here and half here with sign plus. And um, the noise power from this resistor is half here and half here with the sign minus in uh, voltage. So we have a correlated noise that is K T, uh, KT temperature of the oscillator uh, minus KT temperature inside of the power splitter divided by 2. And the overall effect is that uh, uh, the phase noise is KT oscillator minus T splitter divided by power of the oscillator and this term temperature of the power splitter produces a systematic error. The same thing happens with the uh, y, y type resistive, uh, uh, resistive power splitter. The difference is just that uh, only one quarter of uh, the oscillator power goes here and here, but uh, the correlated noise uh, from the resistor has uh, minus sign, and uh, this is just one quarter. Uh, so uh, the overall result is the same. Then uh, we conclude that with uh, something really weird. Uh, most instruments uh, uh, use uh, the estimator, uh, uh, that is the absolute value of the cross spectrum. And uh, this uh, estimator is biased because it, is, it can only be positive. It is uh, slow because it takes in uh, the unnecessary noise uh, uh, in, uh, in the imaginary part, while uh, uh, all the useful signal goes in the real part. And uh, this estimator may hide anti-correlated artifacts. The best estimator is the real part. This is faster because it uh, doesn't take in uh, unnecessary noise, unbiased, and uh, this doesn't hide artifacts. So um, this is really weird example where we hacked an FSWP uh, at uh, the Rodischwarz uh, Research and Development Center in Munich, uh, Germany. And uh, we measured the 100 megahertz oscillator, and this oscillator has uh, a quartz filter at the output. So it has uh, this uh, strange uh, impedance mismatch at the output. Uh, we uh, extracted the real part of the cross spectrum, and we observed something. In this region, in this region, the cross spectrum actually changes sign, uh, changes sign. So to plot it uh, in a log uh, scale, uh, we had uh, to change uh, the sign of the real part uh, to flip it to positive numbers. So in this region, uh, um, uh, the result uh, is real nonsense. Uh, and uh, the problem is due to a combination of fact. One is uh, the mismatch, mismatched impedance at the output of the oscillator in this region. The second fact is uh, the anti-correlated noise in the power splitter at the input of the instrument. And uh, the third fact is uh, some crosstalk inside of the instrument. And we could measure the crosstalk uh, with, with some tricks. Anyway, uh, this thing uh, is not for beginners, uh, but uh, 
you can't keep in mind uh, this uh, this is notch that uh, is even more pronounced uh, if you take uh, the real part instead of the absolute value. And you may like uh, to read the full article here. To conclude, here we have some resources you may like if you wanted to learn more. First thing, this is the reference book on the lesion effect of phase noise and frequency stability in oscillators. A Chinese edition is available. I don't understand Chinese. Second, uh, this is a large book on microwave and uh, radio frequency synthesizers, uh, and uh, this uh, book contains uh, a large chapter uh, uh, on uh, phase noise, uh, variances, oscillators, and so on. Uh, this is published uh, in May uh, 2021. I'm not going to tell you where copyright goes, but I will get nothing. This is a thing uh, that uh, you may really like if you work uh, in laboratory. Uh, this is a reference chart uh, containing uh, most uh, formula relationships, uh, power low and uh, so on uh, you may find uh, in a practical laboratory work uh, including uh, frequency counters uh, wavelet for Allen variances and all the formula of conversion uh, from uh, spectra to Allen variances you can download it uh, from uh, my home page uh, and this is totally free. Then uh, at the, the Femtrace Institute uh, in Besançon where I work, uh, we have a technology platform uh, for the measurement uh, of oscillator noise variances uh, and uh, so on. Of course, uh, this is a GovLab, uh, so it doesn't uh, have a lucrative uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, my lectures for PhD students and uh, young scientists are uh, open access. Uh, just inform uh, the PhD school uh, is all what you have to do. And uh, all the information uh, about this are on my homepage. My homepage, uh, rubiola.org, uh, uh, contains a bunch of material, uh, all free of charge. Basically, uh, most uh, of what I do, uh, uh, slideshows, uh, uh, white papers uh, and uh, so on. Uh, there is no way to spend a cent here. And uh, a book project on phase noise. Uh, this is a long term project uh, in my life. Uh, and uh, it's time uh, to, to work hardly on it. Uh, stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Well, thank you very much, Enrico, for this rather complete overview of phase noise. Uh, um, let me just uh, uh, increase the volume, please, uh, because uh, your voice is quite uh, weak. Can you hear me? I can hear. Can you hear me as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. Try to to speak closer to the microphone because uh, your voice is actually weak. Okay, I try to speak louder. Oh, uh, oh, hi, hi, Jerome. Salut, Jerome. Uh, hi, hi, Enrico. Um, yes. So I just wanted to open the floor to to questions. Um, I think you have one in the chat. But it's more a comment than a question, actually. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I have. I got. I got just one question in the chat uh, that was about uh, um, about uh, the uh, the two port devices. Uh, why they cannot have one over f squared, one over f cube, and so. Uh, but it seems uh, it was Alexander Wilczewski. Uh, uh, but it seems uh, happy with the answer. So the thing is that the integral, uh, uh, the integral of the spectrum is the total, uh, total uh, mean square phase, uh, which is uh, the square of the delay, the coefficient. Uh, so uh, it diverges um, if uh, if we have. Uh, uh, a, a slope uh, steeper than uh, uh, than uh, minus one, it diverges. Uh, the delay diverges. Uh, it's, uh, it's all that. Thank you, Enrico. Any other questions? Somebody, oh, somebody uh, downloaded uh, the Enrico's chart. Uh, uh, well, uh, then uh, I advise uh, to look uh, at uh, the Enrico's chart uh, uh, on uh, Zenodo, the CERN website, uh, Zenodo, because uh, uh, it is a newer version, uh, but otherwise I'll update uh, the one in my website. Then, oh, somebody is asking about the page 11. Uh, so I have to uh, go back to, uh, to my presentation uh, because uh, I don't know. It's, uh, uh, you can segment. share your screen. Yeah, yeah, yes. But the first thing is that uh, I have to bring the the presentation uh, uh, here, and, uh, just uh, out uh, out of uh, stupidity. Uh, I have no other word for that. Uh, I uh, I still not have the presentation on uh, on the screen, but it is it's loading now. Okay is loading now so uh, 11 page 11 all right uh, here we go uh, let me help to share the, the, the screen okay i share my screen uh, and i share this uh, presentation can uh, uh, can you see this so the question was about a page uh, uh, page 11 uh, yeah but uh, now now uh, the chat is gone i see my presentation and the chat is gone uh, repeat the question about the page 11 hey uh, can you hear me uh, yes, yes. Uh, try to speak uh, close to the microphone, please. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for the uh, presentation. Uh, I have some question about page 11. Yes. So sir. the first question is, uh, the AVAR plot is for uh, what quantity? Is it the phase noise that is plotted in the AVAR plot? And after that, the second question is, that the weights of the m bar and p bar are plotted up to two tau, but the integral in the first equation is only from zero to tau. So uh, why is the weight defined? Well, over uh, well, minus? yes, uh, yes. Uh, this is uh, uh, is actually <clears throat> actually. Uh, if you look at the the, can you see the the cursor? Yeah. Can you see? Okay. So this formula is the classical Allen variance. This, this is why average the in the classical Allen variance. So integral from uh, t zero to t zero plus tau, and this is y average. So mm, you plug uh, this y average 
in uh, in the other uh, in oh, the Nico, other we do not see your well we only see um, the presentation in, in presentation mode with a, a lot of short okay. slides can you just zoom on slide 11 oh, okay i am i have a, a, i have a slide 11 uh, do you want me to uh, to go in presentation mode maybe that would okay. be better Okay. Can you yes, see? Yes, it's, yes. All Perfect. Right. All right. So now, now I have to look for a laser pointer. All right. So here you have uh, the equation uh, defining uh, uh, y average uh, for the classical Allen variance. And this y average. Uh, uh, corresponds uh, to this uh, uniform average here. So you plug uh, this uh, in the formula of the Allen variance uh, and uh, you have the definition of the traditional Allen variance. Now, and then uh, you replace uh, the expectation uh, with the average on M, um, M samples of the thing, uh, and this is quite uh, usual. But uh, the, there is a, another approach uh, where you, you redefine y average. Instead of this, uh, you redefine y average. And uh, y average is the product of y multiplied by the weight function, which is sketched here. Uh, and the integral is in the real axis is uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity. So when uh, the, the weight function W looks like this, uh, this formula is exactly equivalent to that. Well, not exactly. You have just to specify uh, that the rectangle starts at the T0 and ends at the T0 plus tau. But uh, you see that uh, it is exactly the same. But now uh, you choose a rectangle, a triangle, as the average, the, the weight function, instead of uh, the rectangle. And, and you have a different average, a, a weighted average. And when you use uh, this definition of y, <coughs> uh, the formula gives uh, you modified Allen variance. Then uh, you can uh, use uh, a parabola like a parabola like this uh, as the weight function. And uh, this parabola is the frequency response uh, of a machine uh, that uh, takes uh, phase uh, samples uh, and uh, calculates uh, the frequency using uh, the linear regression on phase samples. So you have this weight function uh, and uh, the formula gives uh, um, the parabolic variance. Well, uh, a little unusual approach, but it's more powerful. Sounds clear? Uh, yes, thank you. So, more question? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, hello. Uh, I have a question, and it's more just a kind of a, a methodology uh, question. So, for yeah. some of these MEMS, you know, novel MEMS based oscillator products, yes, there's kind of a technological choice and, uh, how to say, trade off between going towards high frequency MEMS that probably have lower Q factor or lower mm -hmm. frequency MEMS with higher Q factor but requiring more. Uh, frequency multiplication. So what is the kind of the back of the envelope uh, method to see, okay, is it wiser to go to this oh. technology for the MEMS for a given phase noise frequency or 
no, do we use Leeson model as a first yeah. order approximation or what, what should we do? Well, uh, Leeson, I, I always uh, use uh, the, Leeson, uh, the Leeson model. Oh, by the way, PowerPoint crashed. Oh, so uh, I was trying uh, to uh, look uh, for uh, the... So, so just uh, it crashed and now it's proposing uh, to... Uh, to to take a version as God. Uh, this one. Uh, this, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, fixing this, uh, and uh, I want to, to show you something uh, uh, with oscillators. Uh, and uh, where is oscillator? Or maybe maybe there is a something else I can do. Uh, that uh, that is a sketching, sketching on uh, on one note with my. Uh, so I'm going to um, close this uh, and uh, and this, and now let me share. Uh, an application uh, and the application is this one. So can you see uh, a, a notebook uh, with the, yes. okay with the square uh, with the frame the uh, page and so on. So so we have an oscillator that is basically this uh, an amplifier with the resonator in feedback. Well, this is a symbol of the microwave resonator, but uh, it works all, also with MEMS. So the, the spectrum of the oscillator looks like this SV, looks like this. Uh, we have a four high frequency oscillators, uh, the spectrum looks like uh, like this. This is the uh, oscillator. And uh, we have uh, something uh, like this. Uh, this is uh, 1 over F. And this is the amplifier. So this... Uh, uh, let me see. All right. So this uh, floor. So this point, uh, this plum point uh, is New Zealand over Tokyo. And uh, this floor uh, is uh, is what uh, is uh, F K T over uh, P. This is noise factor. Uh, Boltzmann and a KT is thermal energy. And the P uh, is the power here. So um, when, uh, hmm, what happens uh, when, uh, when you multiply and uh, uh, and uh, um, well, I admit uh, whoever. Yes. Uh, uh, so when uh, you multiply, so so not first. Uh, notice that uh, this uh, this quantity is independent of uh, the carrier frequency. So. Um, when you multiply frequency, what you get, you have uh, this spectrum. You multiply by the frequency by n, numerator, of, if you like, numerator over denominator. 
and what you get is something like this. And this quantity is numerator over denominator squared. So uh, if you target uh, uh, the, the lowest noise, uh, the lowest phase noise, uh, of course, uh, you start from the highest frequency and you do not need to uh, do not need to uh, to multiply so you do not lose uh, signal to noise ratio and this is one answer that the other possible answer is that uh, you have uh, q the, the uh, laser frequency this laser frequency is equal to zero over two q. But uh, uh, higher frequency devices, uh, uh, they have higher new zero devices. Uh, they have, of course, a higher uh, here. And they have lower lower Q. So uh, so when you work with the higher frequency devices, uh, uh, this uh, corner room uh, goes there. So you lose in this region. So you yes. gain, so, yeah, yes. So you gain in this region, and you lose uh, in the other one. So then it's more the spe the actual specification, uh, yeah, yeah, where this corner. Okay, got it. It's it's just a, it's just a matter of uh, clarify what do you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. If you if you want. Uh, good uh, the best in this region uh, in uh, yeah there is no doubt you choose the highest frequency you have if you want uh, some stability so uh, good uh, if you want good uh, sigma y Allan deviation at low which means uh, stable at lower frequency you you choose uh, you, you go for uh, lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I got just, it. Just Thank for just for reference, because uh, I I know by heart a lot of parameters of quartz oscillators. Uh, in a, a five megahertz uh, oscillator, uh, you can buy um, ten minus thirteen stability or two ten minus thirteen. Uh, there are uh, several manufacturers uh, and below below uh, minus 13 uh, you have still uh, commercial options uh, down to well it's a matter of patience and, and uh, personal negotiation with manufacturers uh, because they have to get something out of the production but uh, you can hope uh, for something uh, from uh, six to eight, uh, 10 minus 14. Uh, but then, uh, then if you have a uh, 100 megahertz uh, quartz oscillator, uh, you hardly have 10 minus 12. Usually the best ones uh, there, they give a path in 10, mi 10 minus 12. Alan Valiance at one second. So, so this is uh, the, the quartz version of what I am saying. Mm. And by there is another thing, uh, there is another thing uh, that uh, there is a general low, well, rather than a low rule, more than a low rule. QF, Q nu zero. Rule. Well, the value 
the value for the quartz uh, uh, is uh, something like a 10 minus 13, 10, uh, 10 power uh, 13. But uh, uh, other technologies uh, tend uh, to have uh, to have their thing, and uh, this uh, Q nu zero rule uh, is actually the energy stored in the resonator. I have uh, this uh, hidden somewhere. I've never wrote this, uh, but it seems uh, something rather mysterious in the time and frequency community, but the sensor folks, uh, they know this. Yeah, we will, is, uh, for the MEMS resonator, it's kind of this QF product is the kind of golden standards when you're looking at uh, silicon-based uh, resonators and you're talking about Akizer limits, Everyone's yeah. trying to push this kind of QF, that's right, yeah. Yeah, 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 and this is the energy. Thank you. I have one follow-up question. Oh, yes. I don't know if someone else, yeah. Um, it's it's for the, um, so this is this is assuming, Who is uh, Who is oh, sorry, it's Andrea. Andrea, okay. Sorry. So the, um, it, it's more now, uh, people are now adding much more complexity in the in the in the PLL of these MEMS-based yes. oscillators. Uh, can we still use your hacking methodology uh, when we're having these very complicated sigma delta and well, so many filtering feedback loop within but, to kind of uh, extract? The... I guess the question hacking is a little bit of an art. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it, it is uh, what uh, it is. Uh, uh, as uh, as in, in when when you hack a computer, uh, it uh, you, you have a lot of knowledge, uh, but uh, you have personal skills. Uh, this kind of art of uh, hacking things. Uh, but, but so can we can we improve much more than this the simple listen uh, kind of uh, behavior for the oscillator once we add in more complexity in the PLL or the PLL is. I mean, the architecture of the oscillator is still limited to kind of this one over well, F squared, one over F. Uh... Well, the architecture of the oscillator is limited by these fundamental things. So they are rather okay. fundamental. Um, so the, the lesion effect uh, is uh, something fundamental because it's, uh, it's, it's the general. If you see how the equations are derived, uh, uh, this is independent of technology. This is one thing. And the other thing, uh, people uh, uh, do not all agree about uh, one fact, but I believe that uh, uh, Flickr is of fundamental origin. It's something, uh, something, uh, uh, having to do with the fluctuation dissipation theorem. So you have these, uh, these uh, things, uh, they, are, they are fundamental, but then uh, in uh, the PLL, in a PLL, uh, you have the noise in the phase detector, and uh, this noise is scaled up and down uh, depending on frequency. Mm. I didn't... Uh, uh didn't uh, show how the noise scale in in the presentation i didn't uh, show this uh, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, it's available somewhere else uh, chiefly it's available in uh, uh, in uh, the chapter 2 of the book of uh, i mentioned the uh, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the new book uh, with the synthesizers for about synthesizers. So, so, so when they do this kind of noise shaping and all these uh, kind of uh, yeah. methods, they're playing around this uh, corner frequency, but they cannot do much more than. Uh, oh, no, the, 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 yeah. the, the oscillator you cannot uh, you cannot uh, scale uh, you cannot escape uh, from the scaling rules uh, when you multiply. 
when you multiply, you have this uh, parameter numerator over, over denominator. When you multiply, when you divide, uh, so when you start from high frequency oscillator and you divide it down, uh, things are even worse. Uh, and uh, this is the Egan model, uh, William Egan, uh, uh, well, some 30 years ago. Uh, so the idea is that uh, you have uh, you have a synthesizer that does numerator over denominator here um, you input new output yeah so uh, and then you have an output stage So this output stage is limited by flicker and thermal. And this thermal is FKT over P, P0 and P0 is here at the input. So when you have uh, the noise of the oscillator like this, uh, uh, you scale down uh, according uh, to mm, to this uh, down to this uh, up and over d square rule. Uh, but at some point, uh, the, uh, the noise hits, uh, you have the, the noise of the output stage here. And uh, when the noise uh, hits uh, the noise of the output stage, uh, you cannot uh, get anything lower. And this is one thing. In, in, uh, so this scaling up is not actually a problem. Uh, there is uh, something uh, weird uh, hidden in this uh, scaling gap. Uh, and the uh, scaling gap. Uh, uh, has uh, at least potentially has a carrier collapse. Carrier collapse uh, is uh, something uh, that, uh, is, again, uh, this is uh, something fundamental. So when, uh, when you do th this thing, uh, um, then uh, this is a noise free noise free gear work and you pull uh, the noise uh, other uh, somewhere else so uh, with the multiplication uh, uh, you start from uh, from a phase noise And this is a time fluctuation. This is the quantity we call X. So at some point, uh, at some point, uh, you have this X at the input, uh, noise-free synthesizer. X at the output. If this is noise free, you get X at the output uh, equal, uh, equal X at the input. So the time fluctuation, uh, this is uh, the same thing as saying uh, phase at the output uh, equal numerator over denominator times the phase of the input. 
Now, something uh, weird happens. Uh, uh, you describe uh, the phase modulation as a carrier, uh, and then uh, the carrier is fluctuating around here. So uh, when you multiply, the, the phases ring uh, gets larger. Larger. And uh, this is governed by the Bessel function. Uh, function. Functions. J0 uh, rule uh, of the quantity M rules over the carrier. J1 rules over the sidebands, etc. First order side bands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At some point, huh? and, and these uh, basal functions uh, look like this. This is J zero. J one starts like this, uh, and J one. J2 starts, etc. So when, uh, when uh, your uh, modulation uh, index uh, um, get uh, the, the, the value M equal 2.405, uh, you lose the carrier and that's that. And so when, uh, in the case of noise, uh, when uh, the noise, when the phase noise integrated in the full bandwidth of the system uh, gives a, a modulation index like this, uh, you, you just lose the carrier. You no longer have the carrier. And this is the carrier collapse. This is, and this is uh, important uh, when you go up. When you go down, uh, the relevant thing uh, is the noise of the output stage. Uh, yeah. And then in the case of a PLL, uh, there is uh, something else. A PLL, so you have a PCO. phase detector, let's say instead of a mixer, I write a phase detector. Most often in integrated circuit, you have the phase uh, frequency detector. Uh, and then uh, the VCO. Here you have a divider. And here you have a divider in. So uh, this is a divider uh, by uh, by. Let me say. So let me say if I put an N and D in the right way, I'm always wrong in this silly thing. So. And then you have the loop. Uh, so, uh, so new in, let's say N1 and N2. So new in divided in divided by N1 equal new out divided by N2. So uh, new out, new out equal N2 over N1, new in. 
So batch of writing, uh, and this is the denominator, and this is the numerator. So trash this, uh, and you have uh, new output over new in equal numerator over denominator. Then this is a nice way to write a fraction. But what happens in a PLL uh, is that uh, you have this uh, new, this frequency here. New. Well, other detector, which is the same frequency here. Mm -hmm. So, this is uh, uh, this is a, a low frequency. So a voltage fluctuation here voltage fluctuation here can have a dramatic effect on uh, on the the, the output. So you cannot choose, uh, yeah, randomly this uh, this first division. Uh. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, again, uh, try and error, try and error. Uh -huh. And by the way, if you remember uh, the uh, the. Uh, phase uh, type and uh, and the time type noise uh, this tends to be time type so it scales uh, so phase noise it tends to be equivalent to a fluctuation uh, x uh, that is uh, independent uh, here fluctuation x uh, independent uh, of, on the output uh, frequency and this is new out so uh, you cannot uh, choose at random of course uh, uh, of course if you have a low frequency here uh, you have uh, you have a very high resolution if uh, there's a small, a small increment of frequency, uh, if you choose a higher, uh, higher frequency, you have a, a large uh, minimum increment, uh, so you lose resolution. Uh, uh, but otherwise, uh, so, and then you have a. Uh, the this uh, sigma delta like uh, techniques uh, that help uh, you actually can uh, can flip this um, for example here you can put n or n minus one you can okay so are you still there yep yep okay uh, somebody stopped the recording, but uh, doesn't really care. Uh, so it's, I don't know if it is a warning uh, about time or not, uh, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No warning. I don't know who stopped. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, saying uh, with this uh, technique, uh, noise shaping, uh, or uh, and, you actually flip the 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 divider from n uh, to n uh, n minus one, so uh, you have. Uh, oh, is it better? Okay, uh, let me write n plus one. So you have n over d for a fraction delta of time huh? 
and you have n plus one over d for a fra for a fraction one minus delta of time. Better writing uh, the opposite way. Okay, better why writing. Uh, better writing. Uh, uh, delta one minus delta of time and delta. So, so what you get is n n over d uh, n over d. So plus uh, well same. Okay, good. So uh, so you switch uh, for 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 time one for a fraction of time one minus delta. You have this frequency for a fraction uh, uh, delta. You have this frequency. So uh, the frequency is between n and uh, over D and N and N plus one over D frequencies in between uh, and it depends on this fraction delta uh, and, and the idea of uh, the, the idea is that you have a kind of a pseudo random uh, switching between these two and you do the noise is shaping uh, by, by flipping uh, very quickly be between these two things uh, and you push uh, the noise apart from the carrier and this is uh, the modern this is called the fractional n and uh, it, it employs uh, the algorithm of the sigma delta Got it. Thank you. And so, yeah, you you still limited, uh, as you said, by the least and kind of bounds. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, there are different regions, uh, different regions mm. of the spectrum. Uh, but um, if you are interested uh, to high to phase noise at high frequency, you are in this case, uh, uh, and you target the highest possible uh, frequency of the oscillator. If you are interested in this part, uh, uh, you target lower lower frequency, and then uh, uh, and then you have uh, the Egan model uh, uh, describing um, uh, describing uh, how how the noise is scale scaled up and down, uh, plus uh, this carrier collapse, but this carrier collapse. Uh, is something uh, that you very seldom uh, encounter in uh, in uh, your life. I remember when, well, uh, when I, when I was young, uh, the old at that time old attempt uh, to synthesize a noise that is a frequency for uh, the 9.2 gigahertz of uh, cesium standards uh, uh, somebody can try to multiply uh, five megahertz a quarter uh, or it was actually six megahertz a point to something uh, and it was a comfortable number uh, suitable to multiplication uh, and in the end uh, they they Step it up to 9.2 gigahertz, and just by multiplication. But the starting from this low frequency um, produced, uh, and with rather noisy devices they had at that time, uh, this resulted in the carrier collapse in some cases. Uh, then uh, then in the specific case of the PLL you have this model and uh, you add uh, 
you add the noise, you add the noise, the equivalent noise at the, the phase of frequency detector, and this is an important limiting factor also. So every so the choices depends on on, uh, on your priority mm. on what you want. Understood. Thank you very much, Professor. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, any other questions to Enrique? By the way, the, just uh, just uh, something funny. Uh, I'm uh, ce I'm celebrating my my birthday, giving a tutorial on phase noise. Uh, I live for phase noise, uh, and uh, well, the nerd I am. Uh, this is two power uh, six today. Happy birthday, then! <laughs> happy, happy birthday, Enrico. <laughs> Maybe I have just one then uh, follow up question as the as the birthday gift, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, in the in the MEMS resonators we we can also easily get into nonlinear. Oh, just a, a minute. Uh, so oh okay, it's some uh, it's just a chat. Yes, say again, say again, please. So, so oh. if, for them in the we can easily hit a nonlinear regime. So some of these uh, cubic nonlinearities. Uh, some nonlinear uh, regime. Uh, uh, yeah, and we and there's also some new uh, new stuff that we see is some coupling. Well, nonlinear, of, nonlinear of what? Well, what is in, nonlinear? What is nonlinear is that we have an effective increase in the Q factor, so okay. we have um, we have sudden like bifurc uh, bifurcation in the. Oh, okay, I, I I got I got I got. When uh, uh, I, I guess that this is not nonlinearity, this is the, the nothing resonator. So, for example, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so when you have uh, this, uh, this uh, in a low, uh, in, in a low, low power, uh, you have this, uh, but uh, at higher power. Uh, you may have uh, some uh, resonance that looks like this, uh, and at a too high power, you may have a bistability. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, at too high power, you may have bistability. A little exaggerated, but uh, so this uh, uh, red line, I would say no, uh, no, uh, because uh, you have uh, two uh, the, the two possible uh, oscillation frequencies, uh, and there is no reason uh, why. It's actually exaggerated, but. Uh, uh, but they're uh, they're close in frequency, so yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Something, uh, uh, something like this. They, they, yeah, I understand they are close. They are close, but I don't know if uh, if you can uh, make sure that uh, uh, that you choose the right one or not. Huh? And that there is another thing uh, that uh, uh, I have never thought about this, honestly. What I know is that uh, there are the Cauchy Riemann, uh, Riemann conditions, uh, and they are a kind of a gear connecting real part and imaginary part of a function, and they can be written in polar coordinates. So they are written, so you have kind of gearbox, kind of uh, deterministic relationship between uh, 
uh, real and be between uh, modulus uh, and phase. So the typical modulus looks like this. Uh, and the phase looks like this. Yeah. And uh, the phase, uh, the phase uh, is, uh, the phase is proportional uh, to uh, the derivative uh, uh, the over the omega of the modulus. Yeah. So uh, when uh, when you got uh, this uh, bifurcation, uh, the derivative may change a sign. So now I am back to. Uh, to the lesion model uh, when you start from the radio frequency. And then uh, you, you transform uh, this uh, into uh, the phase, uh, phase model. So this is a low pass. And uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, the gain of this is exactly equal to one. So the second sc scheme, uh, in the second scheme, the signal is exactly the phase of the radio frequency here in the first scheme. So uh, I never tried uh, to understand what happens uh, uh, if, uh, if you mess up the phase uh, in, in this. I can't figure out uh, uh, which kind of low pass uh, uh, can, uh, can you put here. From, from this. It may be a fun exercise for, for this summer. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, one effect is this duffing. The other effect is where you basically have the resonator that has this fundamental mode. And at yes. higher input power, it's going to start coupling to another mode. Oh, and yes. what you have is this sort of local Q improvement or, or kind of uh, frequency. It stops moving in frequency of wait, this wait, fundamental mode. Wait, wait. When... Uh, um... When so when you are in this green uh, at the some uh, some power you have this region. Uh, it starts uh, coupling to some three F zero or some other mode. You know? Yeah, yeah. Let's imagine yeah. you have a fundamental mode and it couples to a fluctual mode, and yeah. in this internal cup internal uh, yeah coupling of modes, somehow this green uh, this green curve then yeah. kind of has an equivalent improvement of Q factor. So do we just well, model this? Yep. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The Q factor is has many equivalent definitions, <laughs> and all them are in the special case of linear. So the Q the Q factor is uh, the minus the bandwidth at minus three dB. The Q factor uh, bandwidth divide so is uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, for the amplitude. Uh, yeah, uh, but I guess here uh, it's the phase. Uh, yes. So it's, uh, yes. So this is uh, new. Uh, the Q is a new zero divided by the bandwidth at minus three dB, or it is a new zero divided by uh, the bandwidth. Uh, at the plus minus 45 uh, degrees. It is also uh, the, the decay, the decay when you have uh, the exponential decay, something like this, uh, uh, the, the tangent here, this uh, tau relaxation time is equal to uh, what Q over pi 
multiply by the period or uh, q over pi divided by the frequency here which is the same thing but i prefer uh, just uh, just that the, I prefer putting uh, the period here uh, because a period uh, is proportional to, uh, to time, uh, it's more mnemonic. Uh, and then you have other, uh, uh, other definitions. Uh, so you have, uh, uh, when, you, when you have this uh, usual model RLC, you have the voltage uh, across uh, C divided by the voltage across R. Or the voltage across L, the inductance divided by the voltage across R. All these things are equivalent for, uh, um, uh, for uh, the linear case. But uh, in... Uh, and by the way, the slope of this, uh, the slope uh, is a 2q times k, and k is the dissonance. It's a more complex formula for larger frequency swing, uh, but uh, around that the resonance is that. All this is good for, uh, for, for the linear case. In the nonlinear case, uh, uh, all uh, these uh, standpoints about the resonator, they, they, they get uh, disconnected. Uh, the, the phase, it, the phase is of course a steeper here you have a phase that is really vertical uh, kind of in this region uh, really changing abruptly and this is very favorable if you plug it uh, this in the lesion model uh, it's very favorable uh, but uh, then but uh, this doesn't match the energy concept like uh, by the way another standpoint is that uh, this is that the power the power this is the power uh exchanged by exchanged by l and c divided by the power dissipated by the resistance so uh this part of the the, the, the slope of the phase uh, gets disconnected from the other things. So, uh, so the analysis is for sure more complex. Got it. Yeah. yeah. I never but, tried I mean, it. I never tried it to, to do this. Actually, I, I stick on the lesion model because you can, you give you get in a very short time at a very short uh, mental uh, effort uh, you get a reasonable approximation of the reality and then uh, you can get crazy with the numerical simulation uh, with the different uh, types of CAD uh, but uh, uh, but the results are always decently close uh, to this uh, wavy hand uh, analysis Got it. All yeah. right. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. So, any other questions before we conclude the session? Oh. Unfortunately, we don't have a birthday cake to share. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you all, you all, after attending the tutorial, uh, just uh, go to my web page, uh, download all what you want, uh, and uh, and uh, well, at some point, uh, uh, email, ask your questions uh, when you like. So. Uh, um, uh, 
I always have uh, 15 minutes online to answer a good question. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Otherwise, I really enjoyed uh, staying here. Uh, Okay, so thank, thank you very much again, Enrico, for your tutorial and also for your time, the time you took to answer all the questions and details. Um, I guess we can conclude the session now. Um, thank you again to everyone. Um, and see you again soon. <laughs>